Hey, Bob. Um, well, I wanted to ask you something to follow up on something you said yesterday about how, you know, coming into camp this year, you, you feel like you have more ownership of the team. Um, I mean, how does that, how does that help you uh, in camp just uh, in terms of your approach and, and trying to instill everything that you want to instill here? Oh, I think it, I mean, I mentioned also that, you know, I have my, uh, my own staff with me and, uh, and we've worked hard as a staff this summer, albeit a lot of it was long distance, but you know, you come into camp and, and, you know, you have your technical side of things already figured out. You have, uh, you know, um, all your work you've done in, in the off season and you're bringing it into camp you have a plan that you're coming into camp with. Um, you know, you already have, for me, it was good, you know, seeing the younger guys that uh, last year that got called up. So I already have an idea what their games are all about. So in, in making teams and company uh, and combinations, uh, line combinations, things like that. That's more or less what I was, was, I was referring to. I think that, uh, and the guys on the other hand, they also understand, um, you know, my style and, and what I expect. And, you know, we worked hard to, uh, you know, build out a culture package coming into camp and, and talk about those things. But now we're, you know, that's over with them. We're, we're talking about, uh, um, you know, how we're going to play and, um, you know, what kind of team we're going to be in our identity has already been taken care of. You talked about uh, how on, on the first day you had a team meeting and, and you know, you, 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 you told everyone that training camp last year needed improvement. The pace needs to be better. It maybe has to be taken a little bit more seriously. Now that we're a few days into this, have you seen any, have you seen some encouraging signs in that? Yeah, that's a great question because today was our best day of camp. Um, you know, I think uh, a, a lot of the first few days was a lot of teaching. And I thought that we, uh, you know, not only video, but on the ice and practices and, and, you know, a lot of stops and start situations. And, and there are some new things, like I've mentioned into our system. So it's, it's not just the young guys, it's even the veterans that are getting used to that. So, um, you know, today in our video meeting, before we went over to the rink, we talked about, you know, getting some of the summer hockey habits out of there and getting our brains around playing like it's the real game today, like it was like it's going to be on January 14th and, and you know, uh, managing the puck better and, uh, you know, actually any, um, putting into the game the, the, the things that we've been talking about for the last week in our in our system play. So and today the pace was better, uh, was more physical um, and you could see the guys were thinking and executing within the systems a heck of a lot better. Have you seen the veterans kind of take hold of take ownership of, of what happened last year and trying to set the culture that you're trying to instill? I do. I think a lot of these guys, uh, um, you, you know, it's nice to have Cooch back there on the ice as, as your captain, number one. Um, you know, his leadership, I mean, Tommy Hurdle has been very vocal through camp and, and, and has been, uh, you know, leading in his own way and Carlson and Burns and guys like that. But, you know, I, I've seen, you know, Evander Kane working with young guys after practice and I've seen, uh, um, you, you know, many veterans, Patty Marlowe, guys like that. I think that everybody you can tell sort of has that. Uh, we've tried to put last year behind us kind of uh, um, attitude. And I think guys are really understanding um, you know, we got to act as a family, number one. And I think that, uh, you know, our veterans have set a standard here. I think they've been, uh, you know, the hardest working guys at camp. Uh, Shang. Hey, Bob, uh, the groups today uh, uh, in the scrimmage, were they the same as the groups yesterday? <clears throat> um, there was a few changes, but um, Leonard went up with Hurdle and Kane line and he played really well. I think I think he scored two goals today. He responded very, very well to that. I thought he looked good up there. Um, yeah, but for the most part, the practices were were the same lines and Donato was with Gregor and Nieto. Um, the line that really clicked today that was really, uh, um, you know, caught everybody's attention and they did everything at full speed and, and, and the hell of blocks, Chemileski and Blitchfield line. So, yeah, there's different every day. There's someone else different stepping up, which is nice to see. And, uh, um, you know, for the most part, I liked that top six and, and how Leonard slides into that uh, into that slot. As of right now, obviously, things can change. OK, can you talk a little bit about that, about a kind of flip flopping uh, John and uh, and a Donato there? Well, I think it's our it's our only opportunity to sort of experiment and see, uh, you know, who has chemistry with uh, with each other. And, uh, you know, and I, I would probably assume that the next few days we're going to try a, a few different combinations. It was, uh, you know, Mario was with Burnsy today, which uh, was was a little different. Um, first game they played together um, in, in training camp. So we're just trying to, you know, give ourselves as many options as possible um, for the next week till we figure out, you know, what those lines are going to look like and those deep pairings are going to look like. And you know, we talked about oh, you changed some special teams up today. 
um, and, and different guys, in different spots. And we're just, you know, we're tinkering with things, trying to find the best, uh, you know, the best luck. Sure, sure. And yesterday uh, we spoke with uh, Marcus, uh, and of course uh, last year he took on a you know greater penalty killing role uh, once uh, Barkley uh, left, and of course uh, Melker is gone now, and and you guys added Matt Nieto. So you know, are you kind of looking at maybe Marcus Sorensen and Matt Nieto as being your kind of your first choice penalty killers out there? I think that makes sense. I think that uh, you know, obviously, if it's it's going to start in our end with a face off, we want to make sure that we have a. Uh, you know, um, the right shot centerman out there or left shot centerman out there, depending on the right, the, the, the dots. But uh, um, after that, yeah, I think if it's uh, on the fly, uh, you know, those guys are, are pretty obvious, uh, um, you know, first choices to get out there. And all depends what the game's like, too. I mean, if, you know, Cooch and Tommy Hurdle and Kaner and guys like that that are going to be on the penalty kill, if they're uh, they're playing a lot or there's a lot of power plays, that might be different. But, uh, you know, situationally, yeah, I think those guys uh, um, could be effective together. And uh, yesterday we spoke with uh, with uh, Redeem and, um, you know, you, you mentioned uh, uh, yesterday that, you know, you're not too concerned with Redeem physically, but he does seem uh, that, you know, maybe uh, there's a mental stress from all the, you know, all the knee issues that he's had, you know, is, is that fair to say? I don't know if I would, I would say it was a mental stress. I think what's happened is, you know, he's had, uh, nine, 10 months to, uh, um, you know, to, to work on that knee and, and rehab and everything else. And, you know, camp's been heavy. It's day five. And uh, um, I think it's just, you know, obviously hasn't been under that kind of stress for that long. And I think, uh, I don't think that's anything out of the ordinary. I think it's probably normal, but, um, you know, I think the trainers are taking care of things and making sure we're on top of it and, uh, and giving him proper rest when he needs it. In fact, we give him a maintenance day today. So tomorrow's a, uh, a mandatory day off. Um, so we figured that would be the right thing to do. And hopefully he's back uh, um, on Thursday when we're back practicing. All right. Thank you, Bob. Dan. Hey, yeah, Bob, hope you you can hear me. I'm having a little Wi-Fi issue, but hopefully yeah, you got me. Uh, okay, perfect. So I asked this to Logan too, and I'm wondering uh, your take on it. You know, if you look at the division, uh, preseason expectations being what they are, Vegas, Colorado, and St. Louis would be the top. They were the top three teams in the Western Conference last year. Does Do the Sharks have enough pedigree to get right back in that mix after last season? Can you, you said it before, you know, treat it like, you know, put last season behind us. Is there enough pedigree there, enough veteran presence to, to do that successfully this year to get right back in the mix with those other three teams? Well, I think, I mean, our short-term goal is to get off to a good start. Our long-term goal is to make the playoffs. It's simple as that. I think whether we're in the one hole or the four hole, I think doesn't really matter. I think that we have a lot of work to, uh, before we can say we're a, a contender as a top three spot in our, in our side, in our division. I think that, uh, um, there's some great, there's some great teams, obviously, but uh, uh, we have the makings to be. I think, uh, um, I think we have to obviously stay healthy, but um, not concerned so much of where we're where we're at, um, you know, versus those teams. I think we we just want to be able to say we're playing the best we can play as our group, and I think if we can do that and stay healthy, um, I think we're going to be fighting for a playoff spot at the end of the day. So where that puts us in our division, I don't know, um, but you know if you're calling those three teams are going to be there someone's got to be the four team so you know hopefully we slot into one of those top four spots thank you uh kevin yeah bob i just wanted to check did you have everybody on the ice today we were missing true still uh we were missing uh simic and we were missing uh latunov is simic a knee related uh with what yeah mean it's day for simmer Uh, Curtis. Hi, Bob. Um, we were um, just talking to John Leonard a little bit earlier. And, you know, it's one thing to do all these, you know, put up big numbers in college and, and to, you know, do the things he's done. But what were your thoughts about him coming to the NHL? Did you think that um, he could, his game could translate uh, to this level? Uh, well, to be totally honest, I've never seen John play. I've seen some video. And uh, um, so for me, what I've seen in the last five days is really my first look at him lifetime. And uh, uh, you could see the, you know, obviously the skill. And he's been, he's, he was in San Jose working out for a month or so before we, uh, before we got here. So I got to talk to him. He's a very mature guy for his age. Um, you know, he, you could tell that uh, um, once he hits the ice, he's got great hockey sense. And I think there's, you know, there's very few that can do it. And I think, uh, you know, getting to watch him the last few days, getting to be around him a little bit and learning about him, 
I think he has a good chance. Um, you know, we talk about the new NHL and, and uh, the compressed schedule and the, uh, you know, every team is pushed up against the cap and things like that. So you need young guys to come in and challenge for spots and you need to, um, to have that versatility. And I think John allows that, uh, allows for us to have that. I think he's a skilled guy um, that could jump in and play a top six role that could play on some power play that can help you offensively. You know, we need to score more goals this year. And, uh, um, you know, we got to find ways to create offense. And uh, he's got a pretty nice offensive mind. And, um, you know, if he keeps progressing like this, I think he's got a real good chance of, uh, um, you know, being in that kind of a role for us. Yeah, what, what kind of player do you want to play alongside Tomas and, and Evander? What, what, what kind of player fits in with, with those two guys? Well, I think Keener's a guy, obviously, he goes to the net, big, powerful guy. And Tommy's got a mixture of both. I think he's, you know, maybe a pass-first guy, Tommy Hurdle. Um, but I think Leonard, to, to play with those guys, I think you need one. You got to be, you got to be smart and you got to be able to make plays in, in tight. Tommy's that big body. It's going to create room for you. Um, and, and Leonard's got a history of uh, being able to, to be a finisher. So, um, you know, I think he compliments those guys well. I think he could... Uh, um, you know, move up and down throughout your lineup. But I think in, in, the, the biggest thing for me is, is, is having a guy that can distribute pucks, um, but also have a, you know, the ability to finish in, 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 in tight. Well, also, I wanted to ask you about uh, John Mockler. He just passed away a couple of yesterday, I think. And, you know, he was the GM in, in Buffalo when you first got your NHL start. Is, how, how big was he as far as your career goes, just giving you an opportunity to play in, in the league? Yeah, I, you know, I have some fond memories of John. He's, uh, um, you know, he's a very uh, a quiet guy, but when he spoke, uh, um, you know, he, uh, um, he, he, the things that came out of his mouth were just, uh, you know, he had the room, uh, uh, he had the room sort of mesmerized and, uh, um, you know, he, he was a guy that just demanded respect. And I thought that, uh, you know, his, his career speaks for itself and what he's done in the game. And uh, yeah, it's, it's, it was sad. I got up this morning and I read that and I, uh, you know, thought about him for a few minutes and how, uh, you know, my start of my career was directly, uh, um, you know, from John in the Buffalo Sabres. So, um, yeah, it was, uh, it was, um, um, you know, sad, to, sad to hear and sad to see. Right. Shane. Uh, Bob, just wanted to uh, follow up. Uh, uh, speaking of Latunov, uh, can you say anything about his issue and when you expect him back? Um, you know what, we're just going to call him unfit to play at this point in time, uh, um, you know, through the directive of the NHL and the NHLPA. I think uh, uh, what we're going to say on most players is just either fit or unfit, and he's unfit right now. Okay. And uh, just to confirm, uh, Gregor, was Gregor the center on the line with, uh, with uh, Nieto and uh, Donato? Yeah, yeah. And Noah played very well today. Yes, he was. Okay. Thank you.